Oh, crap. Prepare to jump into hyperspace on my mark. All right, stand by. Greetings, parents and guardians. My name is John Hasdovic. I've been teaching for 25 years, and U.S. history is far and away my favorite subject to teach. I've always loved a good story with gripping drama, surprise twists, and an ending you can't predict, and I certainly feel that our country's story fits that bill soundly. I am a true history nerd. I read about six to 8,000 pages of history books a year, both political and cultural biography, as well as more traditional event-related history. When I was in high school, I had no idea how much history there was, let alone how fascinated I'd find myself by it. But once I allowed my curiosity to get the better of me, to ask questions about different figures and different events that led me down dozens of roads of study, I was hooked. I hope students find themselves curious at least about one topic we learn about, curious enough that they choose to engage their own minds and start learning more and more about the subject on their own. History is the greatest story, yet you can never read it all, and the tale is never done being told. Distance learning has been a challenge for everyone in education, not the least of all myself. Due to how taxing my teaching load was during our fourth quarter online last year, I ended up gravely injuring the L4, L5, and S1 vertebrae in my back and will need surgery at some point in the not-too-distant post-pandemic future. So now I find myself doing a lot of healthy things to build up my strength to get through corona. I exercise constantly to strengthen my core, but carefully so as to not make my back worse. I donate plasma once a week at the local Vitalant. It provides me with a free corona test weekly, and my blood type, A positive, is in short supply for plasma. Aside from that, I read, stream, diverting shows, play guitar, and sing. I'm hoping to put together a sort of karaoke night for CASA students once per week in the near future, and our new administrator, Ms. Kent, is helping me to get that rolling. Right off the bat, should you ever need to contact me, email is far and away the best option. My address is jhasdovic at sanjuan.edu. I will answer emails I receive between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. on school days on the same day, if not within the same hour, if at all possible. I cannot guarantee a same-day response for emails sent outside of those days and times. I like to go into depth when parents, especially, ask me questions about their students' performance in class, and I find email gives me the means to do that well. To find a copy of our class syllabus, you need to go no further than our Google Classroom. The third topic down under the Classwork tab is called Course Information, Beginning the Class, and you'll find the syllabus there. Students had to take a quiz on the syllabus and score a perfect grade before I would enter any of their grades for the class to demonstrate to me that they clearly understand the fundamentals regarding how this class will work. As far as the grades, an A is earned by getting 90 to 100 percent. A B is earned with scores of 78 to 89 percent. A C is earned with scores of 65 to 77 percent. A D is earned with scores of 50 percent to 64 percent. And an F is below 50 percent. In my class, the unit exams make up the largest chunk of our grade. They are 30 percent of students' overall grade. Document analysis work we do with primary sources makes up an additional 20% of our grade. There will be some extra credit opportunities available with document analysis work throughout this quarter and the next. Smart talk discussions earn students 15% of their grade. Projects earn students 15% of the grade as well. Most of these will be group based. Heat check quizzes earn students 10% of their grade, and the midterm and final exams, both of which act as retakes for each quarter's tests, also count as 10% of students' grades. Citizenship will be determined by attendance, participation, and online behavior. Speaking of grades, I will post all students' grades on Q exclusively. I may grade some items in Google Classroom, but all grades and all points earned for all assignments will be kept in queue only. I recommend checking in two or three times a week, usually towards the end of the week, if you'd like to keep up with your students' progress. In the course syllabus, I lay out what a typical unit will look like for students. Each unit lasts almost always two weeks. 
During the first two to three days, I send out to students the bulk of the work they will be doing over that two week period, including the unit's learning targets, the unit's homework, which breaks down day by day which sections in the book students should read, and which of the learning targets students will find in each reading so that they can better focus on what is essential for the class, the group project assignment, and any primary source documents they will be analyzing. And again, students will have the opportunity to do extra credit in these assignments. Most group projects can be completed if the group works well together in about two to three hours per student. Typically, a document analysis assignment will take anywhere from 75 to 90 minutes to complete. I give students roughly 9 to 11 days to finish the document analysis and roughly 7 to 10 days to finish the group work. More than enough time to do either. For that reason, I do not allow students to hand in work past the final deadline at the end of each unit. For that reason, I also strongly recommend that students do not procrastinate and save working on these assignments until right before they are due. If an assignment is due Thursday at midnight and they begin working on it Thursday at 11 p.m. and don't finish it on time, I will not accept it. If their power goes out at 11.30 p.m. Thursday night while they were working on it, I will ask them why they didn't work on it the day before, three days before, the week before. All students have plenty of time to complete the assigned work, including my students who require modifications and assistance. We have a terrific aide, Ms. Carol Mack, for students with special needs. Not finishing work by the due date is a choice, not a defensible excuse. As far as group assignments are concerned, students are typically given seven to 10 days to work on and complete their group assignment. On the day the project is assigned, I take time to review the assignment as well as post student groups. These instructions and group assignments are posted in Google Classroom under the Classwork tab, and then under the appropriate unit for which the work is assigned. I remind students daily until the project is due to both be in contact with one another as well as avoid procrastinating on the project. I also show students how they can get in touch with each other over Google, and if that fails, to notify me as soon as possible that they can't contact specific members so that I may reach out and try to do so. Waiting until a few hours before the project is due is not only not the time to get started, but it's also the wrong time to start reaching out to group members and your students know this. I have one measure to keep the grading fair for those students who work hard on the project versus those who may not. When done with each assignment, the group must communicate with each other to determine what percentage out of 100 each individual member gave towards finishing the project. The final percentage each student gets determines the percentage of points they get from their project's grade. For example, let's assume a project earned 80 points out of 100 total. If student A gave 100% effort as determined by their group, they would get the full 80 out of 100 points. If student B gave 80% total effort, they would get 64 out of 100 points. If student C gave only 50% effort, they would get 40 out of 100 points. If student D didn't participate at all, they would get zero or zero points on the project. Students who work on the project need to cooperate in terms of determining what sort of percentage each student gets at the end. If students are having tech issues, which has already been a problem for some, they shouldn't hesitate to email me through any means possible to indicate as such. We will then work out a means of making up whatever they missed at a separate point in time. If your student is absent from class for a day, they can always check in on their Google Classroom itself and look for anything that was posted on the day they were absent. Each entry is dated from when I uploaded it. Emailing me is always a smart idea, too, as I can provide solid description. For all intents and purposes, this semester of distance learning is working just like a typical classroom in a typical semester in school where everyone would otherwise be present. This class, indeed online distance learning in San Juan Unified, does not work like independent study. There are deadlines past which no late work is accepted. Should a student start to accrue many absences, families can expect phone calls and emails of concerns from teachers and admin alike. For that reason, it is not advisable to take a week or two week vacation off in the middle of class because students will be missing a great deal and the absences may not be excused. 
It is San Juan Unified School District's policy that students in Zoom may either choose to have their camera on live, may have a classroom appropriate image or icon on their screen, or may have a blank Zoom screen. All students must have their first and last name present on their Zoom screen, however, for identification purposes. As you can imagine, this places a rather unique burden on teachers, as because of this policy, we cannot effectively tell if students are engaging, listening, or paying attention. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance that students choose to interact and ask questions in class if they don't understand. They can ask live or type out questions in chat. Email questions are always welcome. I ask students typically five to eight times per period if they have any questions. And when all I hear are the crickets chirping, I'm left to assume that nobody has any questions. So do encourage your students to truly engage and interact with our live time together, no matter what they choose to have on their screen. The best things parents can do regarding helping their students succeed is check their grades in queue two to three times each week. They can also check their students' Google Classroom page to see what is posted for them to work on. If you're not already added to their Google Classroom page, send me an email and I will try to send you an invite. Emailing me with questions about their students' performance is also always welcome. Also, engaging students daily in what they're doing in class as well is helpful. If their constant response is nothing, that might be a cue for you to steer the helicopter a little closer and look over the classroom and grades on cue much more closely. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was informative and answered the questions you needed answered. If you still have more, don't hesitate to email me at jhazdovic at sanjuan.edu. Thank you and good luck in the school year ahead.